Hey everyone, ever get that like weird feeling when you realize what shows up when someone Googles you is totally out of your hands? Oh, yeah. Well, today we're going deep on exactly that, taking control, managing that online reputation. Mm -hmm. You guys sent in some seriously interesting stuff, mm -hmm. especially this bit about Google's tools and their policies for all this. So let's unpack it, you know, really get a handle on how much power we actually have right. over our own personal information out there online. You know, it really is more important than ever these days, managing what shows up. Isn't it? But where do we even start? I mean, Google's this massive kind of scary thing. True. But they actually offer some pretty helpful tools, self-service stuff. Like there's one specifically for this, managing your info in their search results. Wait, Google does that for us. <laughs> Amazing. Tell me everything. So it's pretty easy to use. You just Tell it what to watch out for, your name, address, phone number, that sort of thing, email address. And then this tool, it's constantly searching, looking for that info. And get this, it'll actually alert you if anything pops up, email or, you know, th those push notifications. Oh, wow. So it's not just like crossing our fingers and hoping we're actually in the loop. Exactly. That's a huge relief. But what if, you know, we do get one of those alerts? What then? Things get even more interesting then. You can actually, right there in the tool, request removal of any of that personal info if you don't want it out there. Hold on. I can actually ask Google to just <laughs> not take stuff down about me. Is that even allowed? There are some rules, of course. It's really focused on the sensitive stuff, your name, address, that phone number, email. Right, right. It's not about erasing every mention of you, but keeping that truly private data, you know, actually private. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's about keeping the really personal stuff under wraps. But what if I find like a whole website showing my signature or uh, got a copy of my ID mm. and they don't have my permission? What can I do about that? Good question. That's where Google's broader policies kick in. For content removal, they've got specific ways of dealing with all sorts of different content. So it's not an instant poof, it's gone situation. Though. Right. There's a process. Google reviews every request, makes sure it lines up with their policies, you know, in the law. I bet. It's more complicated than I thought. What other kinds of content do they deal with then? Oh, all sorts, like explicit images, fake ones, mm. you know, stuff that's not consensual, even content connected to your name that you just don't want associated with you. Doxing, of course. <laughs> stuff on sites that, well, their removal practices are kind of shady. Makes. And then anything related to minors, whether it's um, explicit or not. Wow, that's a pretty big list. Mm -hmm. Sounds like they've thought of everything. Mm -hmm. But just because something fits one of those categories, that doesn't mean they'll automatically take it down, right? Just because I ask. Exactly. They really scrutinize things, make sure it's legit, matches their policies, and, of course, anything legal. Wow. This isn't as simple as hitting delete, is it? Yeah. But other legal stuff do they have to consider? Oh, all kinds. Copyright problems, you know, someone breaking counterfeiting rules. Even court order sometimes. It gets pretty complex. <laughs> can't imagine dealing with all that. So what about this? <laughs> Let's say there's outdated info about me online, old address, phone number, that kind of thing. Even if it's been removed from like the original website, could it still show up in search results? All the time. Yeah. Oof. But good news. They've got a tool specifically for that. The outdated content update tool. It basically tells Google to hurry up and scrub that old info from their results. So it's like a refresh button for your uh, digital self. Pretty much. That's awesome. Seems like Google's really tried to cover all the bases here. I mean, they even have that legal request help center, right, for those tricky situations. They do. It's important to make this stuff as easy as possible, you know. These can be really tough situations to deal with. No kidding. Okay, let's talk about a really sensitive one. What about, well, explicit content? It's got to be awful to have those kinds of private pictures shared without your okay. Definitely. It can be really, really rough. The good news is Google does have a process yeah. for getting that stuff removed. That's good to hear. Yeah. So what's the deal? What has to be true for them to take those images down? Well, for starters, they have to show the person nude or, you know, doing something sexual right. or stuff from their private life. And they can't have given permission for any of it to be public. Makes sense. And they can't be like making money off of it right now either. Google has a whole page just for this actually. It's called Remove Explicit or Intimate Personal Images. All the details are right there. So there is a way to get this stuff taken down. Yeah. That's a relief. But what about if someone's safety is at risk? 
Like yeah. right now. That's different. They need to call the police immediately. If it's an emergency, 911, Google can't help with that kind of thing. You know, they're not law enforcement. Of course, of course. Safety first, always. But besides that, are there other steps people can take to get back in control, you know, in these situations? Well, figuring out exactly where the content is, is a big one. That might mean Googling yourself, making a list of the websites. You can also try contacting those websites directly. A lot of them have ways to report stuff, you know, like especially social media. Oh, right. Those little report buttons. Exactly. So it's kind of like a multi-pronged attack, working with Google, contacting those sites, and even reaching out to groups like Stop NCII, like a whole digital cleanup crew. That's the idea. And if you're having trouble finding the content elsewhere, but you have a copy of it yourself, you can actually search using the image on Google. They have tools for that, too. Wow. Being proactive really is key here. It is. This is so helpful. I'm getting a much clearer picture of what we can actually do. Are there, like, organizations out there that offer more support, maybe guidance for all that? Yes, Hans, yeah. Can don't... you give us a few examples? Sure. One is StopNCII.org. They're an international group all about, well, stopping the spread of this kind of content shared without consent. That sounds like a lifesaver for anyone going through this. Yeah. It's great these groups exist, you know, to help people through something so tough. But even if Google takes the content down from their results, it doesn't mean it's, like, gone from the Internet. Right? No, that's important to remember. So what can people do then to get rid of it at the source? Usually the best bet is contacting the website owner directly. They're the ones who can actually delete it from their site completely. Right, right. And Google actually gives tips on how to do that, how to find that contact info. Okay, so it's about taking action on all fronts. Google, the website owners themselves, and getting support from groups like Stop NCII. Knowledge really is power here, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's important to remember that laws about this stuff, you know, these non-consensual images, it varies by state, by region. Oh, so even though Google has their own rules, mm -hmm. we also have to know what's legal where we live. Exactly. Makes sense. So it's not enough to just go by Google's guidelines. Right. You can start by looking up your local laws on Google, but if you really want to be sure, it's always best to talk to a lawyer, a legal expert. They can give you the specifics for your situation. Yeah, sometimes you need more than just a general overview, right? Exactly. And if the content you're trying to remove doesn't fit neatly into those categories we talked about, there might be other legal options, too. Like what? Well, there's the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, it might apply in some cases. Oh, the DMCA. That's all about copyright stuff, right? Yep. It can be a really powerful tool for getting content taken down. Google even has a form just for DMCA takedown requests. So if someone's copyrighted stuff is being used without permission, they can use the DMCA to get it taken down. That's the idea. Another layer of protection for creators and individuals. Man, there's so much to learn about all this. But it's exciting, you know. I'm starting to see how much control we really do have over what shows up when someone searches for us. It's not just something we have to passively accept. Exactly. That's the whole point. You're not powerless. There are tools, there are resources, legal options even, to help you shape how you appear online. It's about being proactive and knowing what your rights are. Okay, so for someone listening who's feeling a little overwhelmed right now, where's the best place to start? Google's got a good page called Delete Information from Google. That's a solid starting point. It lists all the types of content they handle, the steps you got to take. Right. From there, you can kind of branch out, see what tools, what resources fit your situation. That's a great tip. It can be a lot to take in, you know, when you mm -hmm. first start looking into this stuff. Having a clear starting point is huge. It is. And even if you don't need to take any action right now, just knowing this stuff exists, the tools, the resources, that's empowering in itself. Absolutely. It's about taking control, making sure what's out there reflects you and how you want to be seen. So we've covered a lot of ground already. Google's tools, all that content removal stuff, even legal options. Before we move on, though, I want to go back to something you said earlier about monitoring your online presence regularly. Why is that so important? Well, the Internet's constantly changing, right? New stuff about you can pop up anytime. If you're keeping an eye on things, you can catch potential problems early before they get out of hand. Right, right. Think of it like checking your credit report. It's just a good habit to get into. Perfect analogy. It's all about being proactive. And just like those credit reports, catching things early can save you a lot of stress later on. Exactly. And with the tools we've talked about, staying on top of it is easier than ever. It's like taking control of your online destiny. 
You got it. And remember, this isn't a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. The internet never sleeps, and neither should our efforts to keep things in check. So final question, what are some steps our listeners can take right now, today, to start shaping that online narrative? Good question. What info matters most to you? What do you want people to find when they search your name? Think about that. And remember, all those resources are out there for you. Google's tools, those support organizations, even legal options. It's all in your toolkit for taking control. It's amazing, really, how much power we actually have over something that can feel so huge, so overwhelming. It really is. But it doesn't have to be. And on that empowering note, we'll leave you to explore all of this. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into taking control of your Google results. It really is. And it all comes down to knowing what's out there, what you can use. Speaking of which, we were talking about the DMCA before, that uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act thing. Right. Can we break that down a little more for those of us who aren't, you know, lawyers? Sure. The DMCA is basically a law that protects your stuff, your copyrighted material, photos, videos, anything you've written. Mm -hmm. If someone's using it and they don't have your permission, well, you can file this thing called a DMCA takedown request. So it's like a legal way of saying, hey, that's mine. Take it down. Pretty much. And Google's got a form specifically for these DMCA requests. It's another way to protect yourself, your work. That's good to know. This is seriously eye-opening stuff. I'm feeling way more confident about managing all this now. That's great. It's all about those first steps, understanding what you can do. Okay, let's switch gears a bit. We've been talking about, you know, removing bad stuff. Yeah. Negative info. But what about building a positive online presence? That's got to be important too, right? Huge. Think of it like this. You're not just cleaning up the mess. You're also decorating the house. Love that. So where do we even begin with that? Well, one of the best ways is to, you know, create your own content. Put yourself out there. I mean, like starting a blog or right. uh, getting active on social media. Exactly. Having your own website, a blog, it gives you this platform to show off your skills, your interests, what you're good at. What? And social media is amazing for connecting with people, building a community around your work or whatever you're passionate about. It's taking control of the story then, instead of letting the internet tell it for you. Exactly. It's building your own footprint, the one that actually reflects who you are and what you want to be known for. This is starting to feel less like a chore and more like an opportunity. It definitely is. It's a chance to, you know, shape your online self, make it authentic, make it powerful. So someone starting from scratch, what are some concrete steps they can take to get that positive presence going? First step, think about what you want to be known for, your passions, what you're skilled at, what message do you want to share? Okay. <laughs> Once you've got that, then you start creating content that matches those goals. Could be blog posts, videos, social media stuff, even podcasts like this one. The key is to share your voice, your perspective. And don't be afraid to experiment a little, right? Yeah. See what works. Exactly. Try different platforms, different formats. Find what clicks for you and for your audience. Great advice. So we've got the content creation part. What else can people do to boost that positive presence? Relationships, relationships, relationships. Network with people in your field. Talk to folks on social media. Join those online communities. The more you connect, the more visible you become. It's like building this web, you know, of connections that all kind of lift you up together. That's a great way to put it. And remember, this takes time. It's not a quick fix. Building a positive presence is an ongoing effort. It's worth it, though, right? Yeah. In the long run. A strong online presence, that can open doors new opportunities, collaborations, even jobs. Absolutely. And it can do wonders for your confidence, too, knowing you've got a handle on your online self. I love that. Okay, we've covered a ton about managing our online presence, removing bad stuff, building the good, even those legal tools like the DMCA. What are some final thoughts, you know, for our listeners? I think the biggest thing is remembering you have more control than you think. It's not about being perfect online or trying to make everyone happy. It's about being you, being proactive using the tools you have to shape that online story in a way that feels right. That's powerful stuff. It's so freeing to know we're not just like stuck with whatever the algorithms throw at us. We can actually do something. Exactly. And the more you learn, the more you try different things, the more confident you'll become. It's a journey. Before we wrap up, I want to go back to one thing you said, being authentic. Mm -hmm. That really stuck with me. Any tips on staying true to yourself while still, you know, looking professional online? It's all about finding that balance. You don't have to be super formal or anything to be professional. It's more about being respectful, thoughtful, 
and engaging in a way that matches your own values. So it's okay to let your personality come through. Absolutely. In fact, people connect more when they can see the real you, you know? It's about being genuine. Uh -huh. relatable exactly and don't be afraid to share what you're into what you're passionate about that's what makes you stand out i love that it's like a reminder we don't have to pretend to be someone else just to succeed online exactly be yourself be genuine and let that shine through that's how you build a real lasting presence that's fantastic advice it ties into everything we've talked about today doesn't it it does managing your online presence it's all about taking charge owning that digital footprint and making it reflect who you are and what you want to do. Okay, so removing negative stuff, building the positive, the importance of being authentic. Anything else we should touch on before we wrap up? Hmm, maybe some common mistakes. Things people do wrong when they're managing all this. Sometimes knowing what not to do is just as helpful. Ooh, good point. What are some of those pitfalls? One of the biggest is just ignoring it. You know, hoping it'll go away if they don't look at it. Right. Like if we don't look at our bills, they'll magically disappear. Exactly. It's always better to be proactive, take charge, instead of letting things build up. So no burying our heads in the sand. Yeah. What else? What other mistakes do people make? Overreacting to negativity. Someone leaves a bad comment, a bad review. Wow. It's easy to get defensive, right? But getting in arguments online or trying to delete every single negative thing, it usually backfires. It's like trying to swat every fly that comes near you. You'll just wear yourself out. Exactly. Choose your battles, focus on the real issues, and address those calmly, professionally. So don't feed the trolls. Got it. <laughs> what else should we avoid doing? Trying to be someone you're not. We talked about authenticity earlier, and that's key. People can spot a fake, right? Oh, yeah. Be yourself. Be genuine. Let your personality come through. So don't pretend. What else? Don't overshare. Be careful what you put online. Set those privacy settings on your social media. It's easy to forget how public everything is. Isn't it? Sometimes it feels like we're just talking to our friends, but... Yeah, but once it's out there, it can be hard to take back. Think before you post. <laughs> All right. What's the last mistake to watch out for? This one might seem obvious, but don't paste anything illegal or inappropriate. You'd be surprised how many people get in trouble for this. It's like that old saying, if you wouldn't want your grandma to see it, don't post it online. Exactly. Always better to be safe than sorry. These are all such good tips. Avoiding these mistakes can make a huge difference in managing all this stuff effectively. Definitely. And remember, it's an ongoing process. Always learning, adapting, staying up to date with how things change online. It's like tending a digital garden. Love that. With the right tools, the right knowledge, we can all grow a pretty amazing online presence. One that shows our best selves. Okay, we've covered so much in this deep dive. Removing the negative, building the positive, authenticity, those common mistakes. Even using legal stuff like the DMCA. I feel like I have a whole new understanding now of how all this works and what I can do about it. Me too. It's been a pretty insightful journey, right? Totally. But before we wrap up, one last question. What's the one piece of advice you'd give to someone who's feeling totally overwhelmed by all this? Mm, that's a good one. If I had to pick just one... Start small. Don't try to do everything at once. Pick one area to focus on. Maybe it's setting up Google's monitoring tool or making a simple website. Even just being more careful what you share on social media. Baby steps. Exactly. You'll get there. As you gain confidence, you can expand your efforts. It's about that momentum, right? Yeah. Not getting lost in the weeds. Exactly. And remember, you don't have to go it alone. There's tons of help out there. Google's got support pages. There's online communities, even professional services if you need them. Like... Having a whole team of experts cheering you on. That's right. So take a deep breath, pick that first step, and go for it. You got this. I love it. Yeah. So encouraging. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap up this deep dive with some final thoughts and resources you can explore. And we're back. Man, we covered a lot today, from Google's tools to all that content creation stuff, even those common mistakes to watch out for. Yeah, we really packed it in. So much good info. But I think the biggest takeaway for everyone listening is this, managing your online presence. It doesn't have to be a total nightmare. It really doesn't. We've broken it down into manageable chunks, right? Yeah. Show you the resources that are out there, and most importantly, proven that you have the power to shape how you look online. Exactly. It's all about being deliberate and taking those small steps consistently and building the online presence you actually want. So before we sign off, yeah. any last bits of wisdom? For our listener who's ready to dive in 
take control of their digital life. I'd say this, enjoy the process. Managing your online presence. It's an ongoing thing. You learn, you adapt, you get better over time. And it's not about being like perfect online. Right, it's about being the best version of you. Exactly, be patient, celebrate your wins, and remember, you got this. I love that, it's so empowering, isn't it? You know, it strikes me that this whole deep dive, it's been about so much more than just like Google results. Mm -hmm. It's about taking control of how we show up in the world in this whole digital age. That's a great point. It's about creating that online identity, one that reflects who you are, what you believe in, what you're trying to achieve. And that's pretty amazing. To our listener, we hope this deep dive has given you the knowledge, the confidence to take charge of your online presence. And remember, the internet's powerful. Use it wisely, use it strategically, and create the online life you deserve. Well said. And on that note, we'll wrap up this episode of The Deep Dive. Thanks for joining us.